My name is Innocent Mugenga, and you're listening to the Learnability Podcast. We all come from somewhere and aim to make a journey through life. Constant change. This is an open-ended exploration of our ability and desire to learn, grow, and adapt. In conversation with inspiring individuals and experts in the fields of sciences, technology, behavior, and performance, we seek to find answers to how to navigate and win in this information age. The future is happening now, and we aspire to evenly distribute the knowledge by empowering your learnability. Let's go. Welcome, Jacob. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you here, especially as we're doing this series together, yes. the Gather series, to yeah. be with the founder. Yeah. And I can actually say you're the founder of uh, Tregodem. As well. As yes. well. Gather and Tregodem. Mm -hmm. I want to start off with talking about Tregodem okay. and how you came to found that and, and sort of your journey into that. Yeah. Because as I get it, you, I, I guess there's no night uh last time you call yourself uh culture culture, culture entrepreneur culture uh, entrepreneur yeah. i guess there's no education to becoming a culture yeah. entrepreneur it's starting to be actually really yeah, yeah. okay I'm more uh, i think i i teach at a um Stockholm University at the university. Yeah. Stockholm University. Yeah. yeah. The course is more of a culture uh, project management, but ah, entrepreneurship in a way. Yeah. It actually makes a lot of sense that they yeah. would do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there is an education, but you didn't go that. Education. I did not go. No. No, no. What was your education? What was your path into uh, this? I think trial and error. Yeah. Starting off as a DJ and wanted to do uh, select music at, at the venues. The easiest way was to start a club. Okay. So that started, doesn't sound like an easy way. No, but <laughs> it is. It was back in the day and you just went down to a basement and a, and a kind of a basement club uh, bar and said, you, it was a different club culture. So okay. a lot of bars had clubs all, all days through. Okay. All days of the week. So okay. you probably started on a, on a Monday or a Tuesday with no people. But, yeah. But we got lucky. We um, we ended up failing the first time, actually, but uh, most because the age limit was too high and all our friends were eighteen and oh. couldn't get it. <laughs> okay, that's a but, tricky one. Uh, yeah, and then we ended up in a in a in a basement, a uh, small basement club, uh, yeah. not a club, a bar. Yeah, yeah. And we got we got there Saturdays actually. So, okay. Yeah, we got a. I think it was it's it's these kind of sliding doors that makes you connect to things that you're not educated for because you need to have the, the, the fire going all the time. Yeah. And after failing, going down to, to this guy and said, yeah, you can take Saturdays. It's like, oh yeah, we can take Saturdays. <laughs> we'll we take started that. off doing that. Yeah. We were really bad at it in the beginning, but it, it came in and I, I got such an energy for it. Yeah. Just um, starting to... Getting people happy and getting the vibe up and getting a, a, a crowd there, mm. even if it was small. But the next step we took were really more about um, production as well, yeah. of setting a, a mood there. You actually explained what I wanted to ask you, like how can you be bad and how do you be successful within this? Yeah, And it's about setting the mood and building up energy, would you say? Yeah, I think... Uh, as you say, if we take it, uh, take it a step further, but yeah. a, a nightlife, I say, see the nightlife of, of, of being a, um, another dimension for people. You are, you are in your, your private sector, you are in your, what you do for everyday living. You yeah. go to your job and you have your relations and you, you're becoming something. Yeah. But going out there, what, what we want to create is a space for you to feel free and step into another dimension to be someone else mm, really mm. be yourself in a in an upgraded version yeah sort of putting yeah. on a cape and being the, cape, your superhero yeah. so and that's what we have to create yeah. really yeah and uh first of all i think in the, if you look back it was it's all about the mood the venue the people the atmosphere um Giving people an, an opportunity to be that person and mm. and uh, given a safe environment as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, discovering new things, people, music. Yeah. And to play with that, that's that's kind of creating magic. Yeah. Yeah. And when did you get the playground to play with that that you have today, Tregodem? And and how did that how did you come to opening Tregodem? 
Well, Trigon has two two different parts as well. The the, the pre Trigon that was in in Kungsholmen that yeah. was between two thousand three and two thousand and eight. Um, we started that yeah. just on that journey of of meeting the same kind of people that liked us, and we got the opportunity to do a first a, a Thursday um, that we failed. Yeah, yeah. And then we got back with a new owner of the same place, and we had uh, Saturdays. Yeah. So first we did Saturdays without Trego then, with another name, and then uh, they said you want to take all four days so next summer. Right. So we took them and we started we had to have a concept for it and because the, the 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 venue had a really bad reputation. It was a uh, plank sticks uh, venue. Okay, yeah. so they used to serve food. Yeah, it was a really specific lunch food. specific lunch oh, uh, yeah. kind of venue. So we gave it a name called Tregora. Tregora. Yeah, and it worked fine. Yeah, for about five years, but we got we didn't get along with the owners after a while. All right. Uh, we didn't have the same look on certain things. Yeah. Uh, I remember he could come down and rage over a color uh, or over a, a certain art installation or over music or even over people. Okay. But in the same time, he let us do a lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah. But we grow into club from club kids to more entrepreneurs. So yeah. We wanted to take over and take more responsibility. And then my friend Johan, yeah. who's my partner now, who is more of a, I would say, more of a business entrepreneur, okay. saw the potential of it and said, we, we can do it with, without them. So that's when you yeah, started so we said, looking stop. for it? Yeah. We said stop. And at the same time, I had an event company yeah. doing events. So we were looking for venues all over the place. And Johan worked a bit with me there. Yeah. And he found uh, this place on Blocket. On Blocket? Yes. <laughs> okay, so first we have to explain this place so people understand my yeah. reaction. <laughs> so he found an abandoned uh, plumber company. Ah, under, that's what it used to be. Yeah. Okay. So under Skanstol's Broom. And yeah. This was in 2009. So it was uh, kind of a low economy. It's been really low economy. So a oh, lot yeah. of, of places was abandoned. Okay. Especially office spaces. So this is maybe a bankruptcy previously? Yeah, or... there was a bankruptcy, yeah, 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 according to that. So the past, the former CEO yeah. had it as a retirement okay. gift. So he was still involved in it. And he was a really friendly man yeah. that bought our idea. Yeah. Because we said, we want to re we rent this. Yeah. We pay, we were going to do uh, two months there. But we pay the whole year rent for you. Okay. Um, oh, because you have a different type of re revenue. Yeah, yeah, but so because the rent wasn't that high. I no, think. no. And um, I think the um, I think he, he he liked us, so we we got in there on a Monday. We got the key on a Monday and yeah. opened on a Friday. Wow. Yeah. Damn. And. It it's really a huge place. How many square meters? It's about 4,000. 4,000 square meters. Yeah. So you got the keys on Monday yeah. to a 4,000 square meter space. space. There yeah. used to be a, a, a plumber. Yeah, it's a courtyard, actually. Courtyard. Yeah, yeah. It's a courtyard, uh, two houses underneath one of the main bridges of Stockholm. Yeah. These huge that pillars, um, unique kind of space because it's... No, it's abandoned, really. Yeah. It was really abandoned. It's really cool, and it's it's oddly positioned, but yeah. perfect yeah. position. If you look at it today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, so, it, was, it was fun. The first, you know, we just built stages and yeah. did lightning and did, you know, electrician and did all that by ourselves. Yeah. The first days. And now you have this big space. You Like you said, you're becoming more of entrepreneurs. As an entrepreneur, how does your brain go about when it comes to bringing people there and actually making money and, and creating a business out of this? I've kind of stepped out of Trigger in a bit yeah. uh, because now it's more about developing what is already built. Yeah, yeah. But for us, it's about giving, bringing new people that have new ideas that are good at what they're doing. Mm. So we have. And what you want and you, my other partner, have done is you has created a, the food experience and oh, yeah. and brought that part in. And you want to have established a kind of an organization and an economy that is working well. And then we have a, a really magic uh, curation team oh, yeah. and logistic team. 
and of course it's all about giving the empowerment to the people on the floor to take the decisions okay. and feel that they are part of the product as they they they're their day to day yes yeah. yes because that's where the decisions are made yeah that's where the really important decisions are made um and and i really like the different dimensions of trigodem so you mentioned the food part there is a huge dance floor there's several floors inside the building yeah. so all of this is run by you could say separate entrepreneurs almost yeah, taking could. ownership of their yeah, but it had to feel like one as well yeah, you do yeah. good of doing your own part oh, yeah. but what Tregon has always been successful in is is that it's 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 been surviving the times when it's been toughest oh yeah and criticism oh, yeah. have come in and we've been on the on 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 the end of things yeah. and felt like now we're 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 stuck here that means that it, we have learned to listen to people and take yeah. criticism as a as a as information yeah as a need for people yeah. and start to develop from that is that something you learned or by getting criticism could you tell us maybe give us a, an example of how how you handled that those type of situations either if you have a specific or in general i mean i'm i'm kind of the person that i think most of us are a kind of sensitive person yeah yeah and with that you know when you get criticism you 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 one side you're you're offending yourself and you're criticizing others and you're quite angry you go through all through all of these emotions yeah. but when you come out of it you're more i'm more curious about talking about it to yeah. a lot of people so mm -hmm. i want to talk about it which means that you you create a lot of information and what my my biggest thing with criticism is this, that i want to i want to get the ones that criticize me, me to feel good again mm. you know I'm that i'm really you. needy on that yeah, yeah. which means that i'm interested in what why they are feeling bad about this yeah um so that gives it that has come into kind of like an understanding of mm, it mm. and we re and i like change i don't like to stay no you know if someone criticizes us i really take it we really take it serious yeah. um so i think that's quite important and i think that is something the organization also um, are good at yeah but since i stepped out of it as well we have been better to take it with the faith with a, with a pinch of salt as you say in sweden okay yeah, yeah yeah i mean we have to look at criticism as well yeah. and see if it's okay is everything that comes into our doors going to change the whole the whole view of what we have oh, yeah. or we're going to focus on this direction i think we are a lot more comfortable in where we are right now yeah yeah yeah, yeah you've been going on for quite a few years yeah yeah I mean, how many years is it today about think we're on our our 16th year 16th year yeah that's a long time running that's a long time yeah but you still do mistakes yeah you of course do... yeah you've spoken about it here about your partners yoon and yuan yeah. and uh, also you being such a this is my impression i think you, i think you might agree such a forward thinking forward looking and, and in forward motion person all the time uh, i'm interested in knowing a little bit more about your approach when it comes to collaborations yeah uh, because we heard here on the podcast in the third episode with Paulina Modlitva who's the program editor for Gather yeah she was talking about how she came to get to know you she was introduced and how a collaboration grew from that and she was really happy about the way you've been able to collaborate in creating Gather yeah so I want to ask you a little bit about collaborations your take on collaborations and how to use collaborations to empower individuals in in creating such big things that you create. Yeah, I mean, before I think collaboration was your phone book. You looked at it mm -hmm. and you said, okay, "Who could do that? Who could do this?" Yeah. Um, that's one part of collaborating, but reaching the, out, reaching out. Uh, but the big thing, the big step is to when you start reaching out to the ones that are best at it mm. when you reach out and say i need this person i need to be the, the ones to the best because it, it it needs the best of me to convince mm, you yeah. to do that you, I mean, so you can tell a friend like join yeah. me on this yeah or? it's it's to tell a 
friend, I, I would say there, there are a lot of competent friends around yeah. me, but to really focus on the best one. Yeah. I remember going to a small festival up north and convincing two people to jump on board on a project we had yeah. out in Nobelberget. Yeah. That was one of Gothenburg's best programmer and, and Swedish mm. Sweden's best programmer. Get him on board and, wow. and really to convince myself that uh, I was worth having them on my team. Oh, yeah. And uh, one ended up being a really good friend and the yeah. other one is still my colleague and doing a really good thing around it. So uh, I, I think you, could, you can always ask a person and I think that whoever comes to you and say, hey, I, I really enjoy what you're doing. I have this project and I need your help and I see what you can do. Uh, it's always going to be an honor for that person, even if it's, you know, someone huge, a star. Like oh, yeah. If you do it in the in a good in a good way yeah but what you have to really be aware of is where are you placing it are you is there a safety ground for the person what's the person's needs what mm -hmm. is it good what 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 does it need um in form of of, of financial stuff mm -hmm. in form of, of structure in form of organization is it person for gather for example that is quite unique in its way because it's we don't have an, an organization that's work every day to each other with each other no we have different persons doing everything yeah but they have tons of other stuff so yeah, you have sort of like freelancers uh, freelancers yeah. as a lot of as, or, as a lot of other products work yeah. but you have to be patient with their time oh yeah so you have to uh to rely on that mm. and it's also it's it also about Accepting who the peop who the person is, mm. and that it can life can turn around because you don't meet everyone every day. Oh, yeah. So it means that you can you can go back and forth as well. There's a whole other life that yeah. comes into play, yeah. and that means that you have to give the person a lot of space. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I mean, I mean, it's uh, it's back and forth also. Yeah, with this, but. In the nightlife, especially in the nightlife industry, and I like the collaboration with, between Gather and, and the nightlife industry because nightlife is about the young crowd coming up who want to express themselves. Yeah. Gather is all about growing up and, and finding the future and mm. taking the major bigger questions. And I think these relationships about playing with each other, the knowledge yeah. here and the kind of freedom of expression here, yeah. how they meet. I, I want to get more into Gather that was a really beautiful way of explaining what Gather is. Yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah, growing up, taking responsibility, yeah. and also the, the expression part. Yeah. Um, let me start off with how you have created Gather. How, how did, why and how did Gather come to life? Um, it started off as a think tank, Yeah. basically around change. Because we were kind of tired of how Sweden were looking after 2014 in the election. And I wanted to do something else. I wanted to start up. up, up. We, have just, we just did a festival. We had an event company that we needed to turn around. I was tired of just working with big brands. Mm. Um, and there was something, we saw something missing. So the think tank, the, t the, 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 the lack of of projects that we 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 saw were, were making change, um, and the just the discussion just started to come up about society, mm. on not just our daily meetings but on our breakfast tables with our colleagues. Uh, gave us the idea of, of starting something. Oh yeah. Um, so, gathered ended up answering a couple of questions. First of all. We need to gather kind of a, a diverse and interdisciplinary yeah. focus to be able to, to kind of co collab in this. That's one part of it. Yeah. That's where our major five themes come from. Yeah. Because interdisciplinarity needs to be there. We see that as a, um, as a tool to change, to create change. Different perspectives, bringing yes. different minds together. Yes. What would you what, uh, could you explain the five different uh, themes? Themes, yeah. So it's uh, democracy and power. Yeah. Quite all about our our uh, nations, yeah. our um, 
decision makers, yeah. how power are increasing in society yeah. and the differences about digital power today, oh, yeah. big corporations' power and how that affects uh, society and democracy. Yeah, we're doing one episode here yeah. called Digital Democracy. That's a really, really exciting really topic. Exciting. Yeah. yeah. And then we have humans and machines. Yeah. That's the, the connections between humans. And we had the first episode was called Human versus Machines. Mm. Now it's humans and machines. Yeah. How we're going to co-live together, yeah. how we can create, and what aspects are um, uh, are suitable for a, for a human versus a machine. Um, that name change says a lot about... Uh, where we're going. Yeah, 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 exactly. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's it's media, uh, media information and design and creativity. Yes. It's all of that mixed up. Uh, it's all about an information age. Yes, I would say, fake news, mm. reality. Mm. Um, you have uh, a source. very interesting speaker on that. Yeah, theme. Mr. Mark Sargent. Uh, yes. Yes. A flat Earth. Uh, what would you call it? Flat Earther. Flat Earther. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. 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 And that's that started off. Uh, as an idea of of taking this as far as possible, mm. how can we re, uh, how can we have a person on stage um, that can define mm. uh, the opposite of our belief and define what what fake news is, oh, yeah. and how can we question that mm. together with him? Mm. How can we talk about why he has become a flat earther and yeah. question the, um, the, the 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 really the objects that we think, see as um, as reality. Yeah. And uh, then we have the last theme of uh, urban planning and society. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I didn't think we talked about the economy either, but we can skip that. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, the urban this planning, a... uh, it's actually, it's been all around, actually, urban planning, how we want our, our, our future cities yeah mobility and the, everything around that but this year we're talking about gather galactic which is a really interesting theme about focus of outer space and, yeah and how to move our, our society out there becoming a multi-planetary species yeah yeah species and that's quite interesting because it gives a, we can't just the the big the the thing that can happen is that you st- and around talking about the same subjects all the time. Yeah, yeah. Most of the conferences out there are, are having that problem. You know, you don't, you don't develop a, a new kind of, of um, focus. Oh yeah. Uh, but this year we wanted to take some other other focus. Some new yeah. path. Yeah, some new path. It's really interesting. Uh, I'm I'm excited about doing that episode as well. Yeah. Uh, we need space or space. Yeah. And. Uh, Two things are interesting about that. The term cities as a service and yeah. what that really entails and with 5G, IoT and yeah. what we can expect from that. That's really interesting as well. And also how much money, time and effort is going into exploring if we will become a, in, a multi-planetary species. And there's one, I don't remember who I'm quoting now and I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but the, it's a quote about if we're spending all this time and if we're able to inhabit another planet, we should be able to solve our problems on this planet. First. First, yeah. yeah. What's your thoughts on that? I mean, I mean, so it's, I think it's about going forward. Yeah, yeah. I think the human, humankind is not really a good problem solver. Yeah. Obstacle. Problem creator. Problem creator, yeah. in a way. <laughs> Uh, and just want to go forward and move forward, mm. especially where we're reaching a, a kind of a digitizing and and, and um, com- a, a computerized uh, world. Yeah, it's also programmed to take big steps forward. Mm. Of course, we can solve problems, but we're not good at not creating a new kind of track. Oh yeah. We we rather create a new kind of track yeah. to solve the problems. Oh, yeah. If we look into the to the uh, two thousand fifteen when s- there was a lot of, of immigrants coming to yeah. to uh, or, or refugees coming to Stockholm, Sweden, Stockholm, especially Sweden. 
most of a lot of it that came out were apps mm, that yeah. want to take care of these problems yeah. or this problem that we work on. And that was our that was kind of our society's movement of creating new tracks. Find a solu- it's, it's find yeah. solutions. Yeah, the startup kind yeah. to create these. And of course, because if you're involved in that, is that all you can? Of course, you create come up with new tracks yeah. instead of going back and, and looking what, what what went wrong here. Mm. What what could we do? The root of the yeah, problem. the root of the problem. Yeah. Or the humanizing the, the mm. problem instead. Um, and t- technology is, is a good tool, but mm. you have to you have to look at it as a as a tool, mm. and not just a way forward. Mm. But, um, yeah. I'm not an expert in it, but uh, I can see from the questions that that comes up, I gather as well. Really yeah. interesting to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah. And so we've talked a little bit overarching. We went into some of the themes. What can we expect specifically from this year's gather? I think this year's gather will, um, I, th- I think with the, with the change of the venue that yeah. we've done a couple yeah. of times now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, please tell us about that as well. Yeah, we're moving from the meatpacking uh, Slaktusområdet yeah. uh, to uh, back to Sikla yeah. because we're, we're, there, there are a venue, venues being built there and with our main partners, Altrim and Lindberg, yeah. they're developing that area to a new kind of culture district. So it's an old, large meatpacking Yeah, district. it's quite a large meatpacking yeah, district, yeah. but there's, a, there's still a lot of meatpacking going on there. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that was the problem in there was not a, being able yeah, to... Yeah, there's a big problem there because there's not too much space and oh, we yeah. need quite a lot of space. Oh, yeah. So we have this new venue, but yeah. it's tight. Yeah. So we have three stages, collab, um, co-creation stage, the lab house, all in one. Uh, the art space is the three different stages, all at once, in one kind of tight venue. Okay. So it's going to be really tight yeah. and needy. That and, can uh, be intimate. Yes, it's going to be really <laughs> It's intimate. really gathering. Yes. Um, so that's going to be a really, I think, a really interesting part. And then we have these yeah. kind of, uh, uh, I would say, um, it's like conversation starters yeah. in our in our uh, in our schedule. Yeah. The, the the love path and the love session. Okay. Uh, it's all about how how love is digitalized and what it makes oh, yeah. us as humans. Virtual uh, love. Yes. Um, the death session. Oh yeah. It's about digital death. Um, and the the space session. Um, so there are a few of these. That are kind of talkatives and, yeah. and the, 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 the conversation starters that I think affects this. And then the, the factors. And we have some keynotes that are really interesting as well that yeah. I haven't released yet. Okay. So, yeah. More to come. More to come. I, I want to ask you because it's quite huge moving venue in such short notice. I think the solution will be fantastic. Yeah. But how has that been for you personally? We've been talking about failures I, before. I, I, I like venues. Yeah, I think yeah. venues are, for me, it's the most interesting part about looking to new venues. Um, so this has been a challenging. Yeah, yeah. But finding these unique spaces and develop a new kind of storyline for it. Yeah. That's what you do. It's challenging. It yeah. takes time, but it, it, it's really something we like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. But it's been frustrating because most of the program, a lot of the program was was around the meatpacking as well yeah. and the new kind of culture uh, district of Stockholm. Yeah. Uh, so now we have to take it back, a uh, step back there and, and look for 2020. 2020, we can yeah, expect 2020 it. Yeah, 2020, we can expect it to be back there. And there'll probably be a lot of cool developments around that area as well. I think so. I think Gather needs to take a... a that gather needs to step for a year four. We need to challenge what a conference is. Yeah. Twenty twenty. Oh yeah. Because it's it's challenging to do conferences. It's challenging to to, to finance it. Um, it's it's a new industry for me. I, I can uh, like sort of guess a little bit about running nightclubs and and get a, a view of what that's about. Yeah. And I'm thinking also your transition from running nightclubs into conferences. How is that industry like? And 
what's the status today? What do you hope to change and yeah. see in the future? Uh, it, Stockholm kind of reminds me about New York in a, in a way. Yeah. Uh, both New York and Stockholm have failed of creating uh, good, uh, big, world-known festivals. Okay. Uh, because of we have an audience mm. that are really targeting and finding the, the things that is happening. The trendy. Okay. The stuff that is out there. And creating a movement that goes on and lives mm. on, it's challenging. Because it's always after the new yeah. thing. Okay. And you have you have all the companies coming there and want to do stuff as mm. well. So what we're competing with, especially if we go into the business-to-business -business, mm. um, region, so we're competing with the major companies. We're competing with um, uh, major corporations mm. that do all these huge, big conferences. That's how they promote themselves today. Yeah. Uh, you have everything for Adobe, uh, Adobe Google, mm. um, the major, bigger uh, Stockholm tech conferences, and mm. most of them are for free, or ne nearly all of them are for free. Uh, and you can and they take it from the marketing budget then. They take it from marketing budget, yeah. from CSR budget, yeah. from from um, um, uh, what is it called? To f recruit budget. Oh yeah, and, and yeah. And all of these kind of buddies comes together because it's all about building these platforms. Yeah, more promotional. Yes. While Gather is more on a mission. I, would I mean, say, we right? didn't come from that direction. No. We, we, we hustle on finding partners. We hustle on finding ticket buyers. Mm. We hustle on finding diverse as well. Mm. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's challenging yeah. to compete with that. So I think we have to, um, have to define ourselves mm. further. To become something that these major corporations can't oh, yeah. do, oh, yeah. can't become. And I feel like you're really on that path. I mean, we, we, we are because what I feel is that it is unique. Yeah. It is not about the big names. No. It's not about, though it's costly. Mm. I mean, I would say half of all audience come there and pay for it. Yeah. And a lot of tickets were, were also given away to people that are not able to mm. to, to come t together to get uh, that to inclusivity get both both uh, that you don't regularly reach out to yeah. and they can't afford it mm. and uh, that they don't see that they are space mm. so to, to take care of that mass yeah. that's really important and we're on a track I think we are on a track because I think we have found in a way a unique way to 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 build a community, and I hope to grow on that. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good way forward. It's a long way. It's yeah. a long path, but in the long run, like you say, you're building something for the future. Yeah, I hope so. Talking about the future, what are you hoping to see or create, or what's your what can we look forward like in the future for Gather? Uh, I mean. One thing we haven't succeeded with, with it yet, we're doing one day gather night now. Yeah. Uh, which would be just a great party on Friday at Tregoren, uh, which has a great lineup oh, yeah. of both electronical and, and especially worldwide electronic setup. Yeah. Um, I think that would take much lo more space into what gather is in, in the future. future. Yeah. I want it to more be a 24 hour. Um, ongoing thing mm. where the business business and the, the the kind of bigger questions goes into um sh both showcasing nightlife talking about nightlife uh, experience culture and experience the, having that goosebump feeling both at night mm. and day oh, yeah. uh, that mix Talk, um, you were talking about mixing intellectual and expression yeah. and really enhancing that and my my hope for it is it can be a collaborative part yeah I was down at Sonar and I got a lot of inspiration from that. Yeah. But they're missing a lot uh, on their conference end. Okay. Um, you know, so so I th see that Gather can be a platform for that. But also that we are not going to make a one year event here in Stockholm that most that we're going to invite the world to. We want to create something for this region yeah. here. Of course, people can come here. Yeah. yeah. But we still want to start other gatherers around so the world can, yeah around the world so we can we can challenge we have a saying of, of a local challenge with the global relevance mm. so we can we can talk about local challenges mm. with global relevance yeah. with impact from from global speakers coming here 
but it's also about how we how can we be a sustainable conference where mm. we not fly around people all around the world talk about these subjects that's another could yeah issue. could we uh build together community that ends up where do you think you would end up next next uh, year no next uh, location next uh, i mean we have had ongoing conversations with bogota yeah of course uh, we didn't succeed to 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 do it this 2019 no uh, not because of financials okay. and uh, uh, we have to have the uh, you have to have the government uh, by your side oh yeah to especially have an impact and, and be able to bring up the democracy questions and mm. all that on the table oh yeah um, so we're reaching for 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 Bogota, yeah, uh, and the rest of South America. It it would be um, it would be really interesting to do a big conference in uh, Eastern Mid Africa. Oh yeah, yeah. Welcome to Kigali. Yeah, welcome to Kigali. Yeah, <laughs> I'd love to see gather in yeah, Kigali, definitely. Rwanda. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's um, of course it's been done, both Nairobi, Kigali. Oh, yeah. Kigali. Um, uh, a lot of other spaces have 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 been had conferences, yeah. but it's not. I don't see much of them looking at it. I see you rather go to the big, the big to Tokyo or Asia mm. or, or New York in the Western world. Of yeah. that, yeah. it's uh, more interesting for us to go to places where challenges really become change. Yeah, it's finding solutions, finding to solutions, really. and finding for the major solutions. And that will make an, a bigger impact yeah. on the rest of the world. So. And that's, I connect that back to you being mission focused and impact focused. And it really feels like a grassroots movement, whatever you do. Yeah, I mean, it could be if we, if we, yeah. it's about sp- uh, spending a lot of time on that. Mm. And now we're spending a lot of time on just the infrastructure and getting oh, yeah. the speakers on the right way and all that. So it's about, uh, finding some finding power to also focus on that building that long term sustainable project and all that. Oh, yeah. yeah. And with that, we've spoken on the topic of collaborations. Yeah. I want to ask you, like, to anybody listening to this, what could someone from the outside contribute with, or what what's the like the biggest thing if we're talking about wider collaborations? Yeah. I mean. Um, if you have ideas and, and collaborative ideas, I think everything is open, yeah. especially when including these five topics. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, if you look at to, if you look for example into a, uh, you want to start up a gather. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that yeah, could be a we, thing. We we're looking for for. It's it's not a franchise project, franchise no. project, no. but if you have your beliefs in these kind of questions and you want to create change among people. That believes in innovation and believes in change making, and interdisciplinary um, partnerships and diversity, and that's the key to change. You know, and you feel that you have a connection and uh, a crew that that goes along with you. Yeah. Um, you can start your own gather somewhere. That's yeah. really spontaneously. I love that idea. Yeah, uh, that would be really cool. Because it's hard to scale, of course. Yeah. But you, what you have is a concept. You have a, a, a mission and a concept, yeah. which you can find individual entrepreneurs that could run with it as Definitely. well. Definitely. Yeah. I think, I think it's 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 really necessary to have that. Yeah. That's what we found in, in Colombia. That's why we're going oh, there yeah. because okay. it's not. We we want to do it as well, but yeah. we we don't have the strength to, to create do something. It. There. No, it's, of it course. It needs to be a strong Local. strong relationship and a, a good. Um, um, entrepreneur over there yeah, yeah running it thank you for sharing uh, about teaching us about how how you can make this type of entrepreneurial journey and how you can really contribute to the culture and nightlife and now more and more going into the intellectual pursuit <laughs> and, and <laughs> yeah. solving big issues uh, of today yeah I, I want to move into some of my recurring questions yeah, yeah, to hear your take on this. Yeah. So my first question is, what's your favorite source of information? Mine? Yeah. Um, people. People. Yeah. Makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah. People that brag. People that 
tell the truth, people that don't tell the truth, you know, f see their reactions and yeah. faces and, and all of that. Um, just that conversation can tell you a lot. Oh yeah, yeah. learning from the human human yeah. interaction. Yeah. What's your best hack for learning? Best hack for learning? Yeah. Asking questions, being interested in asking the ones that we never met. Of course. I'm not good at it. I'm doing it on the subway, but I, I rather take, uh, fill my lungs and, and ask someone, hey, do you want to have a lunch? Can we, can we just talk? How do you motivate yourself when you're about to ask that? What's when you're feeling kind of unsure? I'm quite shy into yeah, that. Yeah. It comes probably that like I like to do everything on my own, but it's it's it, it's just about coming over that. I know that it's just coming over that first step. You just have to call, yeah. you know. And after that, yeah. uh, just be. Um, just focus on what you want to say. Mm -hmm. Bring, mm -hmm. Hey, I got this idea. It can, I want to do this with you. Do you want to talk about it? Oh yeah. You don't have to talk around it too much. Just go straight on. Oh yeah. Yeah. Instead of focusing on what could happen or how should I say it? Just... Yeah, and give them, uh, Paulina is really good at it. Yeah. Giving them yeah. a first, like, I saw you there. I like you. Mm. You got me inspired. Yeah. You want to come and talk, or oh. do you want to meet, or do you want to can I buy your coffee? Yeah, that first introduction. That's a great, great tip. And Paulina yeah. is a super networker, so yeah. it's it's great to learn from her. Definitely. So this is a new question, and it yeah. feels very suiting trying it out with you. Uh, what's your favorite innovation through history? Through history? Yeah. So it could be fire. From fire. Yeah, I was gonna say from fire. Yeah. It's fire. Fire. Yeah. How I like you? fire. You like yeah. You just came, you're wearing your flip-flops and yeah. shorts right now. You came from the island. Yeah, I went to Oskar's island where me and Johanna, who is our curator in, at Gather, or at um, Tegeren, um, lit up a fire in a sauna. Yeah. No, fire is so easy in a way, but it's also so dramatic and so yeah. not easy in a way. But oh, yeah. um, we'll take it for granted. Definitely. Yeah. I'm not very much into new technology and new innovations in that way. No. I mean, uh, so I like the basic stuff. You know? And I guess that's where you get collaborations and other people that are really into yeah. different fields. Yeah, I'm, I kind of had too much moodery because I'm into the same. Ants in the pants. Ants in the pants <laughs> to sit around and, and appreciate uh, innovations. I understand. Yeah. And this is my favorite question. If you, got you were plenty of them. You, sorry, you got plenty of them. Yeah, <laughs> I have yeah. a few. We're soon through them. It's, I love hearing your take on this. Yeah. If you were to write a book that would be read by all young adults in the world, yeah. what would be the title and subtitle of that book? Don't call me. <laughs> Don't call me. Yeah, oh, that was the first. It, it came up like call me, but why should they? Okay. Like this, if you're growing up in this and you're a young adult, you know, uh, get strength in yourself. Mm -hmm. There's so much happening around you. You don't have to listen to the to the older people. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we have created a lot of stuff that is shill. Yeah. And all our words will also be out there. So, I mean, I mean, you don't have to call us up. Oh, yeah. You know, you can... <laughs> make up your own history I mean uh, I don't think we have, we have to, we can learn from each other yeah in that way yeah but uh, you not know, you're such a creative young generation coming here mm. and I think it's hard for the uh, for the new generation to be a rebel but we need more rebels out there yeah uh, so make up your own phone calls and, and you know create your own uh, path I would say I like that yeah <laughs> I'm trying to like uh, <laughs> my marketing brain is trying to <laughs> summarize that don't call me is a good <laughs> title. I mean that was the first thing yeah, yeah. Well, don't call me and then the subtitle maybe the rebel gener generation yeah, changing yeah, yeah, the world yeah, or something yeah, like that yeah. yeah yeah that's a good book <laughs> so uh, last question what are you eager to learn within the near future 
That's a good question. Um, I I want to get I want to really get surprised. Mm -hmm. I want to I want to feel I want to feel old yeah. because I want to get run by by the new generation. Mm. I want to see something that uh, that comes out of them as forefront and change making mm. and where you kind of bring the the beliefs where you crossfit kind of the the, the beliefs that they have. Yeah. And they use the technology as they mm. have. If you talk, if you see Greta, for example, have believed that, can you crossfit that with the technology? And, and actually and the, create the, yeah, and the mindset of someone oh, yeah. and create a solution from that. That is not just a behavior app, mm. but there's a revolution. Mm. I want to see that kind of company and learn from that. That's a really good answer. Yeah, in a way. And it's very, uh, it's it's a positive take on the future. And yeah. Sort of handing the baton over, uh, with some confidence in that it would be something good. And I think it's creating that. I think there's the youth are sitting somewhere, yeah. and just having their mind on something. Mm. So don't get stuck in our uh, our nineties and t mm. beginning of two thousand behaviors that it ended up in kind of strict lines where you have mm. uh, interfaces for, for food deliveries, for, for mobility and for social medias and stuff like that. How can we intersect that and mm. make it um, not a conversation that polar, uh, polarize us, no. but bring ourselves together yes. in a way. Yes. And in effect, we can all talk about that bringing us together because that's what the movements have created. Mm. Both uh, Airbnb say that, mm. uh, Facebook says that. Maybe we have to think about that as not a, as not a term for creating new solutions. Maybe there have to be another way. So you have to define bringing people together mm. and see the okay. What have that done in the in the past? How what 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 is the challenges by bringing people together? What aspects do we have to what what changes change do we have to take upon the world before we're ready mm. to bring religion, to bring um, just people uh together? And how does the effect between human and machines, how are they ready oh, to bring yeah. things together? So, when our kind of democracies and um, our, our digital world likes polarize people because yeah. they want opinions yeah. and different opinions because that's what challenged the world today i would say that's a really good answer i'm, get, I'm getting uh and you can correct me if i'm wrong there's a difference between just bringing together and actually collaborating uh, i think it's a big difference yeah. yes and we want to get that collaboration and the collaborate part the collaborate part you need to work with it all yeah. the time yeah because if we are sitting here just you and me, yeah. and we're going to collaborate. We need to co-work yeah. with it. But if we're just going to sit here, and from size, they come different fees. They want to polar, uh, they want to separate us, yeah. because that keeps that kind of infrastructure alive. Yeah, uh, it would really stick on our kind of human problems. Mm. It reminds me of like how we have a negativity bias, like by nature. Yeah. So a lot is fueled by negativity if we're talking about digital democracy and the ad uh, uh, business. Yeah. So actually working on it is fighting that, like really working. So if, like you said, the example, if we're sitting here together, yeah. we actively have to work to Definitely. create a positive collaboration. Fantastic way to end this episode. Thank I you think so. very much, Jacob. Thank you very much. Thank it was you. a pleasure coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to gather. I uh, I am.